Hello everyone, and welcome to Apple Oddities. When you imagine an Apple TV, you probably think of something that looks like this. A small black box that plugs into your TV and lets you stream YouTube and Netflix and whatever else. Apple TVs have also generally been based on iPhones and run modified versions of iOS. Every Apple TV has followed this basic formula with one major exception. The original Apple TV. The confusingly named Apple TV, which was not a TV at all, was released in March 2007 after being announced in September 2006 under the codename ITV. This prototype ran a modified version of Front Row, which was a program on Mac computers at the time, which allowed you to access your music, movies, and TV shows using a large interface that was perfect for laid-back watching. The final product, renamed to Apple TV after a copyright conflict with the British television network, also called ITV, shipped with an interface similar to Front Row. This Apple TV was basically a Mac inside, with a Pentium M processor, 256 megabytes of RAM, a 40 or 160 gigabyte IDE hard disk, and a NVIDIA GeForce Go 7300M GPU. This is also the only Apple device ever to feature a Pentium processor, as MacBooks at the time featured Intel Core Duo processors, soon to be replaced by Intel Core 2 Duo processors. The Apple TV, on the other hand, was cost cut, needing a lower end processor to hit a $299 price point for the 40 gigabyte model or $399 for the 160 gigabyte model, which this one is. At its release, the only way to watch content on the Apple TV was to stream it from a computer running iTunes. A software upgrade, however, was released in January 2008 that brought the iTunes store to the device and also completely redesigned its interface. The second generation Apple TV, released in 2010, also had this interface for a short time before being changed to a more iOS-like design, which has evolved into the current tvOS on modern Apple TV devices. This is the box the Apple TV came in. It opens like this, with a very clean inside, very Apple-like. The device itself is on the left, with a white Apple remote on the right, and just some documentation and cables underneath. This Apple TV has a wide selection of ports on the back, with HDMI and component video, as well as composite and optical audio. In addition, there's a USB port for diagnostic purposes only, as well as Ethernet. Compare this to the second generation Apple TV, which loses the component video and composite audio, but is also about half as wide and half as deep. This second generation Apple TV also has a completely different architecture with it basically sharing the same internals as the iPhone 4. Plug the Apple TV in and an Apple logo appears on screen, being followed shortly by a beautiful 3D cinematic. Before you are presented with its user interface. This is the final revision of the Apple TV software which is available on this first generation device. While the Apple TV could now connect to the iTunes Store, this device is now long obsolete and the iTunes Store hasn't worked on it since 2018. For that reason, I'm going to connect it to my PowerBook G4 so we can get some music running. To do this is fairly simple, just go to Computers in the menu and a code appears on the Apple TV. Then, the Apple TV will show up in iTunes, and you can simply click on it, enter the code, and after you clear this error, you can see it is now connected to iTunes, and the music is actually copying over to the hard disk of the Apple TV. This interface is exactly the same as what you would see on an iPod or an iPhone. It just says Apple TV. Similarly, you can browse all of your music and movies on the Apple TV from within iTunes, just like you would be able to on an iPod. So now with the content synced over, you can see generally how this operates. Uh, we've got different categories for different types of media. I synced over a music video onto this thing, as well as some albums that I ripped onto this computer and some photos as well. If I go into this music category here, you can see all of the album covers kind of uh, rotating around in a cover flow-like experience. So now we can browse through the music and pick out a song to listen to. 
And uh, I've also kind of noticed that this is not really the fastest device in the world. It kind of takes a couple seconds to respond to your clicking, but eventually it does load. Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. So that's a little overview of the first and by far most eccentric Apple TV ever made. Tune into Apple Oddities for more episodes on weird, interesting Apple products.